So I've been doing this full time for just over a year now. My birthday last year, November 11th. 2020 was the first day of being full-time. I got let go from my job uh, the day before my birthday. I was an architectural designer and uh, it was a shock. It was something I was leaning towards. I really wanted to kind of do art full-time and at that point, you know, I had started from January to November. So I had built up like a whole kind of infrastructure for this business and my style started to emerge. So I was ready mentally, but I didn't know if I was ready to take that financial kind of risk yet. But that choice was made for me and uh, November was a good month because it was boxing month and I was able to kind of drop my e-commerce knowledge and see how it would kind of work uh, as a business and it took off and from there it kind of just brought back into my practice as an artist. The concept is this idea of protection um, because pop art and like painting pop figures, there's like a few taboos, right? Like, some people don't consider it high art because people think that you're selling the, the, the person and music labels can also have a problem with that. So I was selling on Etsy and there's like this interesting kind of dialogue between business and art and how these two things kind of combine together and how they communicate with each other through my journey to actually bring forth the aesthetic. Because it's not something that I could have planned out. Uh, before I was doing pop art, I was interested in covering the faces of the people I painted. There's something really like just appealing about it to me. Um, just on like an emotional level, it felt fun and it felt right. When I started doing pop art, it was because I uh, painted a painting of the weekend and I listed it on Etsy and it just blew up. Like people were buying it. I was like making like a sale a day and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. I had no idea like I would see numbers like this. And that was like an honest painting. It was something that I was passionate about. I've always been passionate about music, very invested in SoundCloud. I actually produced music when I was younger, DJed while I was undergrad. So like my relationship with music is very intimate and personal. So like these people to me are honestly just sources of inspiration because I can kind of relate to them now in a, in like hopefully the most modest way. Like I know the work that it takes to get to the level that these people are at, how much time goes into their craft, and that it's not like they just rose to fame, like they were grinding, and that's, it's a hard kind of thing, and uh, I, I resonate with that. So when I'm painting these people, it's really like my tribute to how they make me feel. It's my response, my emotional response to the weekend, that first painting. And then I continued to do pop art, paintings and at that time really my vehicle was color so I was painting them but I was really having a lot of fun with how I use color to kind of portray emotion and Mac Miller was kind of like the first piece where uh, I, I saw this documentary on YouTube about his life and while I was listening to the album in response to kind of my understanding of his music these are the colors that I felt. So while I was painting this, I was trying to kind of project my emotional connection and the colors I was visually imagining onto that canvas, you know? Um, and so at this point, I'm still not covering faces, but then on Etsy, I had music labels start to take my work down and it was getting really frustrating. It got to a point where I was like, you know what, like this is technically within my legal right and I talked to a few lawyers to see what's the worst thing that could happen um, and for the most part like with a painting there's so much that goes into it that's that differentiates it from the photograph or the reference image and the person that I'm painting that I am safe but I don't want to take any risks so I was like hey why don't I just try and combine my earlier explorations with covering people's faces and do it here the first things that I was painting were flowers. And they were just like this connection. I couldn't really explain what it was, similar to how I was covering faces. Flowers were really beautiful to me. And in a way, it was almost like the antithesis of architecture, where architecture is very geometric, it's very minimal and clean, but flowers, they're so organic. They, they can't be planned. I mean, I mean, sure, you can be a gardener and plan out these gardens, but the actual flower itself kind of responds to its environment and that's how I felt growing up. So then I was like, you know what, let's combine these two elements and see what happens. I hadn't been doing that because I was scared that people wouldn't want to purchase my artwork if they didn't see their face, the, the icon I was painting. But then I did Frank. That was my first ever floral exploration and it, it was kind of 
helpful that he was already kind of covering his face so I didn't feel as bad covering it um, and it just it blew up and I was damn that's so cool I just had this idea and like people are resonating with it why don't I continue to to push that so then I did a few others and at this time I wasn't really exploring like imbuing the flowers with more of symbol symbolic meanings and stuff that kind of happened afterwards to help when I was feeling a little uninspired like for example with the weekend up there he's Ethiopian descent and I uh, use calla lilies which are Ethiopia's national flower and I kind of put them as like this visual reference to his hair at the time uh, but I also really wanted to kind of incorporate elements that were meaningful to me being his first kind of project, House of Balloons. And it was the composition finding how to merge these two elements, these floral elements with this, this balloon, this idea of a balloon. And I was kind of just listening to the first project all over again on a walk. And it just like brought me back to when I heard it for the first time in 2011. And it really just like kind of helped me compose the elements because I was able to split up the balloon and now fill the composition in a more interesting way, but also give me like a subtle pop of color. The weekend's grungy, it's very nighttime, it's very dark, but like there's so much life to his music. It was like something I've never heard before. If I were to really break it down cerebrally, it's like this tension between understanding the human that's creating the art, you know, and like really understanding their origin, what inspired them, and seeing if that inspires me to portray them. On the other hand, I am creating work of art that puts these people on a pedestal and it's commenting on this idea of secular worship and how we live in a culture where idols are no longer religious figures. They are people who have exhibited an immense amount of hard work and evoke emotional responses from the people who listen to them, or in now in my case, look at their art. The bust, the concept of the bust is a huge like source of inspiration for me because these heroes from Greek mythology, you see they're portrayed as busts in sculptures and paintings. And that is something that I'm, I, I, that imagery I'm consciously bringing into my work because it evokes that association with greatness. It's about iconizing them and like celebrating their greatness because that's what inspires me. Um, but then it's also a challenge because their faces are like half covered and there's like this split second where it's like, oh, that, that looks like Kanye. Is it Kanye? Or, or it looks like Michael. Is it Michael? And like I, I really want to like make that association like come and go like really fast and that's kind of part of my design aesthetic like how can I find that perfect balance of recognition but anonymity so it's like the artworks are response to pop culture which is kind of like mainstream culture you know when you think about like the artists like the great artists from like World War One and World War Two, like they weren't painting pop art but they were painting culture they were painting emotions and scenery from movements that were happening live like the industrial revolution people were driving in cars and there were new architectural forms and that's what was captured in paintings so the artwork during that time was very much a, a, a portrayal of a moment in time so my question then is like, how is what I'm doing different? I'm, I'm using a different vehicle, I'm using people, I'm using icons, but these are the people in my moment of time. These are the people who have influenced me. This is a time capsule of who I am. This is a journal. It's very personal in that sense. You know, I feel like, you know, I, I, I feel proud of what I have developed aesthetically. I, I feel proud of the process and the system that I've developed. I can look at these paintings now and still feel that passion from when I started the project, and I don't want to lose that. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, it was a great time chatting, and uh, all my work is up at Broken Cage until the end of January. And you can check out my work on Instagram at nishidakroma or nishidkroma.com.